the admiral school for speech and hearing is located in kolegal kolegal is actually a very unique place in that it's first of all far away from the city beautiful landscape mountains valleys and there is even waterfalls it's a very strategic location and we have students from the neighboring districts as well coming to our school it's a beautiful place in many places in india if you have a child who is disabled or if there is a a lady who is a widow they consider it as a bad a bad omen so what happens is when deaf children are in one particular place there are many deaf children they find, they think that that place that place is actually kind of cursed uh, fortunately for us this area has got many deaf children and so we are able to get more students coming in in fact in india there are thousands and thousands of deaf but we are glad that we are able to edu give education for this close to 100 students over here to see that they get a bright future and uh, having worked here for the last 14 years i have seen the changes that come upon a person when they come to this institution when they come here they coming shabbily dressed and uh, their fa their parents come along with them not knowing what to do they say please take care of my child he is your child you are you are everything to them and they just leave and go sometimes they do come and visit them during the summer vacations but then they have completely entrusted their children into our care the parents when they bring the children here they come with so much of confusion they say what my child can do my child cannot hear my child cannot speak what what they will do in the school they are having a school and all those things with now there are parents who see their children working and it's actually the children who are working who studied from our school are the one who are supporting the parents the school plays a major role in the lives of many uh, deaf children and then their experience after they come here they say that they are happy they understand what is happening in the classroom so this school here has given lives for many many deaf children here and honestly to say this is the only deaf school in this district The Adventist School for Speech and Hearing is the first Adventist deaf school world over. Right now there are around 3 or 4 deaf schools around the world of which our school was the earliest one to start. Right now we have 76 children in the campus and there are 56 children who have already gone out from the school and doing well and they are independent. I personally dream that such deaf schools will be established in every uh, union every division and uh, it's it's a great blessing to take care of deaf children i think this is one of the mission of jesus jesus told that is to when you care for the blind and the deaf and the orphan and uh, the fatherless you are actually doing my work the greeting here at this school is different than in the other because we were greeted by pathfinders the entire school all of them are pathfinders and they're called the silent warriors. I think that name is so powerful because their strength. Uh and as you look at the different kinds of activities that they're able to do, they excel in whatever they do. In fact, they did a tent making uh demonstration for us. They won the competition among 38 different clubs for putting their tent together the most quickly. You know, it's one thing to have nice facilities and structures, uh clean rooms, and we see all that here. But what we see just that is everywhere evident is the level of spirituality present in the school. I mean, this really is what Adventist education should be all about. It should be changing lives for eternity. And as I spoke with the students, I just encouraged them 
to accept Jesus into their hearts, to have a relationship with Him. You know, Scripture tells us that eye has not seen nor has ear heard the things that God has in store for us. That means in heaven, even those of us that have hearing um, will be hearing things that we've never heard before, new sounds. And for these children, that's just going to be amazing. And I really am encouraged by the spiritual atmosphere that is present here at this school where these children are encouraged to know Jesus. On every child's bed, there's a small pocket-sized Bible next to their pillow. I have not seen that in any other school, but you could clearly see on everyone's neatly made bed was a little Bible. And I was talking to the principal, and there's only a couple Adventist kids here. There are over 70 students at the deaf school, but most come from Hindu backgrounds. There's a couple Muslim students, but the parents don't mind sending their kids here because they know that the quality of education is so high. Uh, in the villages, they have this uh, feeling that these children may be born deaf because of their parents' sin. Uh, when we go for house visiting, they say, oh, it's because of our sin, our children are like this. But when the children are here, and then for holidays, when they go back home, you should see the neighbors, and they say, no, we thought this child, now she can write English. These children are communicating in English. We wish our children can come to your school and study. So our children are getting good education and good character. When they leave from here, uh, they go with a lot of confidence to face the world. One of the questions that we love to ask students wherever we go is, what's their career goal? What would they like to do when they graduate? Well, here there wasn't a question because there is a photo of the students once they get to ninth and 10th standard, ninth and 10th grade, a photo is taken and on that photo is listed their career goal. So I was able to take the photo and go and identify which student it was and engage with them and ask questions about what their goals are for the future. But it's an aspiration that they have. They recognize that there is something beyond the school here that they can, that they can look forward to. And so it's, it's very exciting. That may change, but it gives them a, a purpose that they're headed toward. Our teachers open up their mind saying, you know, you can achieve whatever you dream if you work towards it. You want to be a doctor, you can become. You want to be an engineer, you can become. Even if you want to be a teacher, you can become. And I'm proud to say that we have had some students who studied here, three of them, who are in the teaching field. Two of them are interpreters in the school and one is working in a deaf school. And I was so glad, yes, you can do what you want to do if you just strive towards it. And I believe that every dream that the children has, they can achieve it with hard work and with God's uh, help. Their love gives us enough of energy to carry on the day. Uh, they shower so much of love, they care for you, and they are very obedient and very, very helpful. They're ready to give their hands for any work. And the smile on their face, that helps us to keep going here. Uh, I always say this, 100 children's love is hard to get anywhere else. <laughs> uh, so this place, we get through love and that's what keeps us going on here. It is such a joy to see these children, after having had their 10th standard education here, going to the higher uh, classes. And even for the higher education, we are so glad that Child Impact International is sponsoring their higher studies up to getting a degree. And when they finish their course, by God's grace, these companies are coming and picking, up, picking them up from the place where they are studying and they are able to get a job immediately. Many of our students are already in the workforce and they are earning a good living. In fact, it's so interesting to note that some of our students, when they get into work, they take a house, four or five of them, they share the rent, they cook, they have morning devotions, evening devotions, and they take care of themselves until one of them maybe finds a partner and gets married. They are always together. So this is the greatest joy that we have to see our children coming up in life.
the deaf school has been here for the last 25 years actually and in the last 25 years you won't believe when when i came here first we hardly had three or four trained teachers by god's grace right now we have almost all the staff trained either in special education or sign language plus all of them have become adventists when i first came here they were probably 50% adventists and the other 50% non adventist teachers but by god's grace today i can proudly say that all of them have accepted jesus as their personal savior it could be because of the fact that in the morning and evening devotions and our worship before the school starts there is a lot of emphasis on bible reading prayer and uh, they are the non adventist teachers have seen the changes that is taking place in the lives of their uh, adventist teachers as well as in their own lives and they have taken a strong stand and that has influenced many of our students also to get baptized maybe close to 15 students have been baptized i wish it was even greater but i know the seeds of truth have been sown in their hearts and uh, it will one day bear fruit Have you ever thought about which of the five senses you would choose to lose if you had to? Personally, I would pick the sense of smell. Due to seasonal allergies, I'm often missing this important sense, and sometimes that's a good thing actually. I don't know if anyone would choose to lose hearing or sight. These senses are so critical to everyday living. Life without these senses is fraught with danger. Children especially become vulnerable and in many countries are ostracized and rejected. At Child Impact, we operate a number of what we call special needs projects. This includes the deaf school, a blind school, and a number of orphanages. We have seen the impact that sponsorship can provide for these precious children. They find a place of safety where they can flourish despite the challenges that they face. As you might imagine, special needs demand extra support staff and resources in order to provide the required educational and housing environment. We want these students to thrive and have the best opportunities available. The monthly sponsorship amount for these children covers close to half of the actual expense. This is why the Blind, Deaf, and Orphan Fund is so critical. This fund fills the gap between sponsorship and the actual cost. I'd like to invite you to support these special needs children by donating to the Blind, Deaf, and Orphan Fund. You can do that on our website at childimpact.org or you can call 423-910-0667. Thank you for your generosity on behalf of these amazing children.